Excellent. I just want to say thank you guys all for joining us. My name is Valerie Peacock. I am the Clarys and Robert H. Smith educator at the National Sporting Library Museum over in Middleburg, Virginia. Um, we have Sunday Sketch with Carol Boozwell today. I've had a great opportunity to be able to work with her on several of these sketching classes. They usually would be inside of our galleries, but we are really pleased that we are now able to offer these virtually so that way people from California and all over can actually visit um, the museum and do programs with us and also helps out for when we have snowy days like this because we normally would have had to cancel class. So we're glad you guys are joining us even on this really snowy day. Um, just a little bit of tech information as we go throughout the program. You'll have your audio off just to help with some feedback. Now if you have a question or a comment or you'd like to say anything throughout the program, please just take yourself off audio or use the chat, whichever you're more comfortable with. Um, if you have any issues with taking yourself on or off audio, just ask me or put it in the chat and I will be on the back end monitoring that. If you're joining us on Facebook Live, you can type things into Facebook Live um, in the comments or in the post itself, in the video itself, and I can help you or can ask that question out loud for you to Carol. Um, we're going to try to go through all of these really fantastic items that she has for us today. We might not be able to make it to all of the images, but we're definitely going to make it through as many as we can. Um, again, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask any comments. Carol is a fantastic artist and I've really had um, fun working with her. So I'm going to stop talking now and turn everything over to Carol. I'm going to go over to the easel, so just let me know if you have any. Can you hear me? Hey, um, when I went from the laptop over to the, the studio, I mean, the easel, could you hear me or do I need to move the laptop closer to the easel? I can hear you. If anyone else has trouble hearing or seeing, please let us know and um, we'll ask Carol to either move or speak up. All right, that sounds great. So first I'm going to discuss some of the materials that I'm going to be using. Um, I'm going to be using lime charcoal. This is called um, pitrum. What I really like about it as opposed to willow is it doesn't have any knots, so you don't get any weird streaks in it. I like to sharpen mine. Excuse me, fine. I think you have to um, put uh, the sketchboard on as the primary because <laughs> For some reason, I'm not getting a full screen. I don't know if that's the same with everyone else. We're getting a full screen of the title of your laptop. Um, I will go ahead and um, pin that video and spotlight it. Thank you. So, Thank you. Um, to help with that as well, what I'll do is I'll take everyone off video for the moment and hide your videos, and that will also make it more full screen for everyone. So if you see yourself disappear, don't freak out. Just let me know when you're ready, Valerie. You go ahead and keep talking, and I'll go ahead and fix this up. So um, with these, I actually, should, I like, they come out of the package, they are, you know, they're just in a cylinder shape. I like to sharpen them. Um, I actually use a, just a charcoal pencil sharpener to quickly just chisel to a point. And you can do this either over a trash can or if you like to use powdered charcoal, you can do it over a large. Um, so yeah, I actually like to just uh, shred it over like this large glass jar. This allows you to catch all the shavings and then you can use the powder for other drawing techniques as well. Once I get it kind of filed down, you can use a pointer, a sandpaper pointer, and that will allow you to kind of roll it as you pull it along. And that will allow you to shape it into a nice materials. I already have several ready set aside. Other materials that are helpful to have is a kneaded eraser. 
Um, I usually have several of these lying around the studio. It's also helpful to have a chamois cloth. Pro tip, buy it from an advanced auto or some sort of auto, auto parts store is a lot cheaper than an art supply shop. Um, it's also very helpful to have a kind of a stiff bristle brush. This is a badger blender. Um, this is sold as an oil painting brush. I have one that I, instead of using it for oil painting, I kept it dry and clean and I use it for charcoal. I also have a watercolor mop brush that can be used for Hey, Carol, your, um, your mute accidentally went on. If you just want to unmute yourself real quick. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for letting me know. I'm not facing the laptop, so I have no idea if the audio drops. <laughs> That's okay. Thank you. Um, and then other uh, helpful tool, these are blending stumps. Um, they come in a variety of sizes. From Sorry, the video, the audio is going in and out. Yeah, unfortunately, this um, this snow may be impacting some of our tech today. Oh no! I'm going to try moving this my laptop. Hopefully, that'll help. Um, so I also like to have large pieces of the charcoal. Um, they come in huge sticks as well, something like this. And I like to break it down into smaller, more easily usable pieces. So this is helpful to be able to get a large area colored in at once. So we're going to go ahead and go to our first slide. And I'm starting off on just a regular charcoal paper. Uh, we'll move to the Reeves BFK after a couple of quick gestures. So with this, you want to start by just kind of blocking in the large shape of the horse. I'm not thinking in terms of like body parts, I'm just thinking in terms of large shape. And this allows you to quickly fill in an area and get the placement correct on the page. So these first couple bronzes, we're just going to do real quick, what would be considered like a one, two, or maybe a three minute gesture. You use harder pressure to get in a darker value. So up here by the withers, I'm going to apply a little bit more pressure along the back, a little bit more pressure and down here. I'm using the side of it to kind of chisel in. under the neck using the side of it to uh, carve in the neck. Here in the chest area, pressing a little bit more. You wanna think about the line of motion. See how there's a line of motion from the top of the withers through that back leg? That is an energy line. And then there's another one coming here from the, shoulder, from the chest area through the other front leg. In the back, you have another energy line coming from the dock on the hind quarter, by the hock, down through the uh, back leg, and over here as well. At this point, I want to take my brush and just soften everything. Gets rid of all the edges and adds a little bit of movement to it. At this point, I can also take, this is when I want to take my, um, my sharpened point and start kind of fine tuning. And this is now that I have enough information on the page, I can start kind of defining an area, defining where the chest is, where the neck meets it. By keeping an, a drawing what's called open, see on the beginning, none of this is well-defined. 
you have an open drawing, which means you can constantly modify and change. If I had started off with hard lines and sharp edges, I would have closed off the drawing, it meant that it would have made it very difficult to make corrections because when you're drawing, you're always realizing, oh wait, that's in the wrong spot. I need to move this up or this down or this over. And by keeping something open, it gives you the freedom, and the ability to make those corrections as you need them. There's a distinct gesture to the face. You can see it where there's an angle uh, through the, um, along this eye and along the nose. Here, I want to compare where does the nose in comparison to the rest of the neck, halfway. The, the cheek. And I want to soften edges again. You want to keep the drawing at the same level of refinement the whole time. So you want to constantly work the whole surface. You don't want to really get one area super well defined and another area not be touched at all. You want to try to keep the whole area at equal level of surface. You don't want to forget about figure ground relationship either. You want to make sure you include where whether it's a horse or a human or whatever it is that you're drawing needs to have some sort of figure ground relationship. So at this point, I would consider this a full gesture. And anything beyond this point would be refining. It would be defining where the, the different parts of confirmation, moving things around, but I would consider this a full gesture drawing. Um, this allows you to capture the, the kind of the energy and movement of like a horse or a person um, rather quickly. So I'm gonna move on to a close-up. I really want to do a close-up of the horse's head for the next one. And for this one, I'm gonna switch over to the Reeves BFK. That's actually a printmaking paper. So it's a little bit sturdier. It's a nice high quality paper, very nice tooth. And it does hold the charcoal a little bit differently than does a regular, just a, the other one was just a regular 18 by 24 sketch pad. So with this, I'm also gonna start again with the larger piece. Um, this is equivalent to if you're painting, you would start with your largest brush. You wouldn't start a painting with a small, tiny detail brush. So this allows you to kind of rough in Kind of getting the gesture of the neck. There's a gesture in the head. Even though the horse is not moving, it's a bronze, there's still a gesture. Gesture exists within any object, whether it's a human, which we traditionally think of in like a figure drawing session. Hey, Carol, can you tell us what that paper is again, please? Sure, it's called Reeves, R-I-V-E-S, B -E -S, as in Bravo, F, Foxtrot, K, um, Kilo. Graves BFK. It's a printmaking paper. Um, it's uh, about, about the same weight as a high quality watercolor paper. It's about 140 pound weight. Um, what's nice about it is it has a slight tooth, which kind of grabs the charcoal a little bit better. And it allows you to build up layers a little bit more than just a traditional um, just drawing pad, which is what I was on before, which is good for quick sketches. I like, so when you always want to think of your shape, edge, and value. And you never want to think in terms of this is a nostril, this is a neck, or this is a jowl. You always want to think in terms of what is the shape of what I'm drawing. And that is because every, all of these are applicable letters. It doesn't matter the subject matter. So I'm thinking that this is an angle that comes out for the eye. Slightly darker value there that comes down. 
a bit of a darker value on this side of the nose. And I'm noticing there's a nice dark value here. So I'm going to layer it in and then I'm going to blend. I'm also trying to use, if you notice the way I'm holding it, I'm not holding it like a pencil. When you hold it like a pencil, it does two things. One, it makes your arm very rigid. And when your arm is rigid and hard like this, you lose the ability to have the energetic fluidity in your line. Um, it's going to make you seize up. Um, the other thing is it just logistically, your hand is now in the way of what you're trying to see on the page and it gets in the way. So the best way to hold it is actually, it's a little awkward to get used to. Do you want to hold it this way? And this, my hand, should, my other fingers just kind of rest on the baton. And this gives you actually much more control. And if I need to get into an area for fine detail, I could just rest one of my fingers on the page. And it allows me to get much more control over the medium while maintaining flexibility and fluidity. Hey, Carol. Yes. Image that we're going to work from, so I can because that one actually has a horse jumping, which will have an idea of movement, which will be nice. Let's see if I can. There we go. So I selected this one uh, because I really like the line of energy you get through the front hooves that are jumping over the fence to the rider. I thought that was really quite well done by this artist. So from here, I'm going to start with, I'm not going to think in terms of fence and horse. I'm going to think in terms, of what is this large mass? So you have this kind of mass coming here. There's a line of energy shooting through here, coming up and around to the top. More of a mass over here. Mass comes down this way. Kind of comes back from the back. Again, I'm gonna soften my edges as I go. Continue to soften. So I don't end up with any of the hard edges. What I have, I, I noticed that the hooves are a little bit further down than I want them to be. So I'm going to grab the kneaded eraser and just pull that back. Again, by keeping the drawing open versus closed, it gives me the flexibility to self correct as I work and to kind of and to mold the charcoal into the drawing I want it to be. The strong energy line comes through here, the front hoof to the elbow, under the belly. Some nice dark connection here. There's a nice shadow right at that point. I wanna make sure I get. And then there's some structure down in here where the fence is, the hedge that is leaping over. It's, so I'm comparing angles at this point. I'm noticing that that is actually shorter. It's down. Without my. So from here, I'm going to keeping it on, keeping an eye on angles. This angle comes down this way. 
And then I want to soften the edge, bring it up. Some nice structure lines here in the anatomy in the neck. But I want to make sure I include it's this angle that comes up here. It's a nice dark value here. This value here actually helps define the under portion of the belly. You want to soften this edge where it connects to the hedge. Double checking the angle of the face. There's a nice line of energy coming up through the ears. Back through the reins. A bit. And at that point, that's enough of a gesture to stop and then compare, take measurements, and before you would refine it, moving on to a much more defined um, piece. I'll go ahead and move on to the next one, which has a nice uh, more uh, lines of movement as well. With this one, there's a nice strong line of energy going through the bottom feet all the way up through the crown of the rider's head. So you have the energy here, the hoops, comes up, there's the elbow. This is about where the hands are, the shoulder, and up. Another line of energy that comes up through the neck. Ears. This energy really extends from the front through the animal and out through the back. And that is an essence of a gesture. You're not gonna get a photorealistic drawing initially with the gesture, you're capturing the energy of the motion. So you have the energy coming up through the top of the rump and up through the tail. In a figure drawing class, gesture is typically used in like the first 30 minutes or so to warm up. It gets the model loose, it gets the artist loose, it kind of gets everybody tuned into the session. Um, we used to do figure drawing at the studio. We would do about anywhere between 10, 20, or maybe 30 minutes of just gesture before moving into what's known as the long pose, which would be any, you know, anywhere from 30 minutes to a couple of hours, depending on the session. You have the energy coming here. And honestly, that's a gesture. That conveys, it doesn't, I mean, it's not a finished drawing, but it conveys the energy of the horse and the movement. Um, again, you want to include the figure ground relationship. You want to include. And the unfinished nature of the drawing gives it a feeling of a figure in motion as well, much more than a well rendered um, drawing where it keeps the, the figure like it's moving. Um, we'll go into the next one. For this one, there's a bit of an arc in the energy to the, fi to the figures. So you see 
So you have the energy going from the front. It's almost like a tri you see there's a nice triangular composition from the front hook up top of the pole, the, the back horse, it comes back down. This has been gestures really helpful for figuring out your composition. It allows you to figure out how much of it fits on the page, where the placement is of the figures, and it helps you create, um, some artists call it an envelope. It's also, I've heard it called an aggregate shape, but it's the shape that the final drawing would fit into. Every, all the parts fit into this hole. So this is where a gesture really shows its strength and not just creating energy for the drawing, but also allowing you to help plan your composition. Belly, we have this energy line from this leg coming down here. So it comes over here. We have the shoulder. This is when I realized that I needed to shrink everything in. Um, make some adjustments compositionally to make it all fit. So maybe a space in here in between this front cannon bone. Writer. To With this one, I'm going to focus on the horse on the left, which is the one jumping over the fence. So for that, I'm going to go ahead and orient my paper, otherwise I can fit the middle. This mass here. Bit of a line of energy coming from the back. It's here. Looking at the angle, I'm noticing that it's not straight, it's not straight across, it actually goes slightly up. Energy there. And there's a ground. Hey, Carol, we had a question. Um, yes. Could you talk a little bit about negative shapes? Absolutely. So for example, in something like here, like the fence, this would be much easier to draw instead of thinking in terms of post and rail, you think in terms of the space in between it. And one thing that'll really help to make sure that you get the spacing correct is to look at the spacing in the negative state. And so this is, so this is, um, to define what negative and positive is. 
So y'all look more so you can see the angles are off. In essence, the negative, I'm gonna actually go point to the to the computer monitor to explain this. So this is the negative space. It is the space in between the positive. A positive is an object, whether it's an animal or a human or a physical object, this is a positive. So a really good way sometimes to figure out, like if you're having a hard time figuring out how to draw, say this hoof, a better way instead of trying to draw the hoof would be to look at the shape around it and to focus on what, how much space is it from here to here to here to here? How much space do you have between this and this? So this is what the positive, and then I mean, this is the positive, but this is the negative. Um, a lot of times when you're trying to figure out, like if you're drawing the head, you're having a hard time getting the shape of an eye. Instead of constantly reworking the positive, the actual horse's face, would be to go to outside the face and really work this outside uh, negative shape. Uh, it's almost like a pushing and pulling of the positive and the negative works together to help you to define what you're trying to draw. So for example, here is, to draw that, so here's our positive. Here's the hook, that is the positive. I want to figure out how to draw this part of the belly. Instead of focusing on the belly, I'm actually going to compare how much room do I have in this, how much space is right here. And I notice I need a little bit more space. This is when needed erasers are great because you can make them whatever shape you need to get in there and chisel away. So we're gonna pull that there. Continuing to work uh, negative space. I'm looking at this space in here as I'm working and not even focusing on the horse. It's working around this I notice that it kind of curves up and around. Notice that value is not that perfect right there either. So also I'm noticing that there's this nice negative space above the rail. Pull that out. Go. We have this. To be able to fix the hat where I'm going to work this negative by erasing it and moving out of the way. I'm going to chisel around the top of the neck. Use the ears. It's 
So heavily foreshortened pose. I noticed that we don't have that much time left, so I'm going to move on to some of the other ones I wanted to get to. This one, and we're, again, we're going to eliminate the, well, we'll just, actually, we'll just mask them all together. Yeah. So starting with the large piece of charcoal, I'm gonna mass in this large shape over here. I'm gonna go ahead and connect this rider to it. Soften the edges a little bit. Start really getting in and defining some of these energy lines. So the belly comes down. You see support right over here before it hits the ground. There's an angle of the shoulder here, an angle of the neck. And the head is slightly turned. Make sure you watch the angles. And there's this nice move, um, this, this is angle here that comes down from the tail through the dock. Here over the neck. And this rider is leaning back. And there's this really strong line coming from here up through the chest and the shoulder area. And it's the rider leaning all the way back with his elbow, leaning back as well. This hand coming here through the reins, which connects over to the head over here. Another strong line of energy coming from this hand, through the reins, over here. Now I wanna move into, it's gonna do, when you, Josh Trick is really good for figuring how to do a, um, so this is what I was gonna do for our longer pose, which is called a sustained gesture. Um, with this one, I'm just gonna focus on the central figure who is closest to us. So with this one, you have, oh, I wanna, so I've, I've noticed at this point, this is actually worn down a little bit. This is when I would actually take a break and resharpen my points. I find it very frustrating to draw without a nice uh, sharp point on my tongs because then they, they don't have as much control over them. Give me a quick moment to adjust that. Is that a charcoal pencil you're using? Oh, great question. Um, this is a vine charcoal. 
I like to sharpen them. This is called a pointer. And I like to, uh, I'm, I'm rolling as I go. This allows me to get a very nice long tip. Um, I'm glad you mentioned charcoal pencil. The reason why I'm not using a charcoal pencil is because there is actually binder in the lead of a charcoal pencil. And the paper I'm using is a printmaking paper. So it actually has sizing in the paper. That sizing allows printmaking inks to adhere to the paper. Um, there's a rule called the rule of one glue. So you only want one glue between your medium and your substrate. So there's no binder in bind charcoal. It's just compressed charcoal really. Um, but it, since there's no binder in it, it has to have a substrate with a binder in order for it to adhere to the substrate. Otherwise, it'll just fall right off. You don't want to have two, like if I were to use a charcoal pencil on this paper, I would not be able to erase it. It makes a permanent bond. Um, so that is why I'm not using a charcoal pencil. But I like to be able to sharpen my batons into a nice fine tip. Sharpen them real quick, and I like to have about about four or five at the ready, which allows me to work for quite an extended period of time before I have to stop and sharpen everything. And I'm just rubbing it on here, and then I'm knocking the dust into a little jar, nice wide mason jar. That allows you to reuse the it keeps the space a little bit more tidy, and it also allows you to reuse the dust. Um, you can draw with it. It's you know there's a lot of artistic applications for. Uh, charcoal powder. These are transferring images, all kinds of things. So for here, for this guy, um, we're going to focus on the central writer. And he has a very nice line of energy going from the top of his, the crown of his head all the way through that front book. It goes up. I'm going to watch how tall I'm drawing because I don't want it to be wider in the paper. I'm watching the angle of the horse, this head coming up. It's the angle of the neck and coming down. Shoulder. There's a, the back is in, there's an angle coming up this way. Through the bottom, it's about here. You see, it's got this one arm coming down, pulling the reins. So over here, shadow right here on that side of the face. So the horse's head is in shadow. The wisp of the tail back here. I'm checking the relationship. Where is this is a hawk in relationship to the tail? How much space? I'm looking at this negative space here. How much space is this? And I'm also noticing that this angle curves a little bit more. This is a darker in value back here. And that is on the straight. This comes a slight angle this way. There's a bend. Yeah. Seeing the relationship and noticing that this it, this knee is slightly lower than over here and it comes at a slight angle up.
which gesture you want to think of drawing from the inside out. Unlike a contour line, which goes along the exterior, focusing on the exterior shape of a positive shape, gesture works from the inside out. So I'm thinking of this interior line of energy through the middle of this leg, how it goes through the leg, through the knee, through the chest, up through the rider. And then from there, that is like my center axis. And then I build the drawing out from there. Same thing is back here on this back leg. I didn't start by drawing the exterior of shape. I drew this line of energy and then that becomes my center axis where I can build the rest of the drawing off of that. Now that I have kind of an axis for the neck, I can start making comparisons like, okay, what is the angle of this? Is it straight up and down? Does it come to the left, to the right? It's all all these minor inner dialogue of what's wrong, what do I need to fix? And so at this point, this is done enough as a gesture, an initial land, that I would take a couple steps back and then start making refined measurements. Comparing, saying, okay, what needs to change? What needs to go higher? What is lower? What values can I push? And start refining a little bit more. Um, so this is an example of this one at a more finished state. This is a, what I did a couple, this, a little bit ago. Um, but with this one, you can see where I, I approached it the same way where I came in with figuring out this strong axis here. I then built the horse and the rider out the same way with working the positive and the negative, working on, you know, figuring, okay, this is where the neck, this is the angle of the neck. How do I build the neck out from there? Um, so that is how you can use gesture to go into, and this is what's called a sustained gesture. So to, for something like that, um, you just keep working the entire surface all together. There's no, I, I'm not gonna work a certain area. This, you, know, you don't go piecemeal. You never wanna work just the head and then just the neck and then just the rider. You always wanna keep everything at the same level of completion. With a drawing, ideally, you should be able to stop the drawing at any time. And the drawing should be complete at that moment. Um, I found this, for example, if I'm drawing, like my kids when they were little, I would do gesture drawings of them all the time when they were playing and toddlers move constantly. So anytime my child could move from where it was and that gesture drawing had to be complete at that moment. And that same um, principle can be applied here where this, no, it is not a finished, well-refined drawing, but I would consider that a finished gesture. Um, it has my energy lines, it has the placement of things, it has everything I need to as a um, amp armature to build a more refined finished drawing upon. Um, does anybody have any questions? I am going to stop us on Facebook Live. Um, but we can still ask any questions or any comments. I'm just gonna go ahead and stop the Facebook Live portion. So if you're joining us on Facebook Live, thank you so much. Um, and we hope you have a good rest of your day if you're joining us on Facebook Live. Thank you for having us. I'll stay on through Zoom. Great, and we are off Facebook Live, just so everyone knows. <laughs> So I know that was a lot to try to squeeze into an hour and I did rush. Does anybody have any questions? Does that have a material or an item that they want me to discuss or show a little bit more? Thank you. Thank you for joining. <laughs> he was my sketch buddy this afternoon. He wanted to check it out too. Oh, awesome. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> my kids like to come to my studio this, too. <laughs> it's very this video as well will be on um, Facebook. If you go to the National Sporting Library Museum and you look at our videos, you will be able to see like this video recorded oh, there. So we do find that a lot of people um, find it very helpful to yes. go back and rewatch as they have time to kind of work through it at their own pace. Um, so please feel free to go back and check that check it out in about a week or two. It will also be on YouTube if you prefer looking at stuff on YouTube. Um, so you can go back and, and view this at your own pace. And these images, if you'd like to see them a little bit clearer or in person where they are in the exhibition, 
Um, it's in current exhibition, Thrill the Chase, Steeplechase and Art at the National Sporting Library Museum. If you can't make it in person, um, we are open Fridays and Saturdays. We do have this exhibit for free virtually on our website. So it's a 360 degree tour and it'll take you through the whole galleries. And that's where Carol um, got her inspiration from. She came in toward the museum. It's a really great exhibit. I highly recommend checking it out if you have the opportunity. Um, and I will say on my Facebook page, I actually have a student group, which everybody's welcome to join. Um, it's uh, if you go to Carol Buswell Artist on, um, it's the same handle for Facebook and Instagram, but on Facebook, I have a group for students. You're welcome to, like, if you have a question, you can post there, you can post stuff you're working on, you can message me. Um, I'm always, would love to, you know, help you in any way that I can. If you have any questions, please contact me. Um, I'd love to be able to help you along your artistic journey. And we have a couple of comments in um, the chat that I'll read out for you because I know you don't have access to that right now, Carol. Uh, so from Dorothea, thank, very helpful and performative, thanks. From Gail with an I, um, thank you for your excellent class on gesture drawing. From Terry, very helpful working on my gestures. From Wendy, thank you, looking forward to more sessions. From Corny, thank you, Carol and Valerie, much appreciated, tell everyone there is a great catalog. Oh, thank you, Corny. Yes, there is a great catalog for this exhibition. Uh, it uh, can be available on our online shop or in person. Thank you. Um, and from Kara, we loved it so much. It was very helpful. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. We um, will have a next Sunday sketch uh, next month. Um, again, last Sunday of the month. And for right now, they are still all going to be virtual. Um, so we really appreciate you guys being patient with us and working through these virtual growing pains. There's always something new every single time that pops up that we're still trying to figure out. It seems like, you know, we're always learning something new, which is fun. Thank you for this opportunity. This is great. And please, if anybody wants to share their artwork with me, just hit me up on Facebook. Um, you can join the student group and I'd love to be able to help you in any way. She's got a great Facebook. So I definitely, definitely take advantage of that. A nice question. Yes. Uh, what's your Facebook address and what's the name of the uh, brand of the charcoal you use? So I'll go hold up the package. Let me go grab it real quick. Okay. If for some reason you, for, you um, forget or lose where you write it down, you can email us and I can send you a direct link to her Facebook as well. Sure, I'll post the materials list on my Facebook feed. Um, so you can, and I'll share the Facebook live to the feed as well once I get off and can go do that. But this is the, the charcoal. It is different than willow charcoal. Willow charcoal looks similar, but it actually is you know, kind of like wonky and it has knots in it. And when you're drawing with it, those will streak on your page and it'll make your beautiful drawing not so beautiful. So get vine mm. charcoal. Your beautiful drawing, not so beautiful. Um, I really like this particular brand. It comes in lots of different sizes. I was using their six millimeter that I sharpened into points. And then I have the 12 millimeter. Those are the big fat chunks that I break into, you know, the basically inch size pieces that I use for blocking in large masses of that. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. Cause I have to order online and I needed to, a better idea. Okay. Yeah. I'll post it on my feed as soon as I get um, done with our workshop. All right, thanks a lot for taking us today. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. I'm so delighted that everybody attended. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Thank you. Carol, do you want to stay on with me for two minutes? I'll stay on. Yeah. Okay, great. All right. So I will Absolutely. say bye to everyone else. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We will see you for our next Sunday sketch um, on the 28th of February, next month. Thank you guys. Bye. 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 Get a cat.